This is 2018 European Girls Math Olympiad uh, problem number one and this is a geometry problem and here is a view of this problem. Triangle ABC is an isosceles triangle where CA is congruent to CB and angle uh, ACB it measures 120 degrees. Um, so this uh, central angle here is 120 degrees. Um, well, uh, because M is the midpoint of AB, as you can see next, uh, and we have an isosceles triangle, that would be a 90 degree angle. And for example, this section would be 60 degrees. The bottom half would also be 60 degrees as a result. So we select a variable point P on the circumcircle, a point like this. Let's label it as P. And, uh, uh, and per, um, and what do we do next? And let Q be the point on segment CP. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, connect CP next uh, to the best of my... There you go. Okay, so this is a very bad drawing, but at least for the time being, it does the trick. Um, and we label uh, the point Q on CP, which will split CP in, in the ratio 1 to 2. So suppose that this Q is such that um, let's write that down here. Uh, we know that C, uh, Q uh, is equal to, or 2 CQ, I should say, 2 times CQ is equal to QP. Um, well, it's given here. Um, it's given that the line through P perpendicular to AB, okay, um, intersects the line MQ, at, at a unique point n. So first let's go ahead and draw that perpendicular line. Here we go. This is perpendicular and we we intersect. Okay, so probably I, I should change where this label is over here. And I extend MQ here and I let it intersect a P. Um, well, let me call this point as H, if you will, the foot of the uh, the projection of P onto the line AB and this point here we label it as M. Um, we need to prove that there exists a fixed circle such that N lies on this circle and uh, for all positions uh, of P. So P is anywhere on the circumcircle. The reason I have two different pictures here is that uh, I, I would like to consider two cases. So the case first case is where P is uh, to oops to uh, e e C and P are on two sides of AB basically, and on the other case is where P is on same side of AB. P is to the right of AB. I know it's kind of a terrible description. What I really mean when I say right, I mean C and P being on opposite sides of AB. And here, uh, case two, I'll have a look at the case where P is on the uh, same side or to the left of AB, on same side of AB as C is. Okay, so basically a point something like this, for instance. But let me first have a look at the first case where P and C are on opposite sides. Um, once I marked the P, I was able to get the point Q and then finally N. Um, and we, we obviously HP is perpendicular to AB. There's another line which is perpendicular to AB and it is CM. And here I also clearly marked the uh, circumcircle, uh, circumcenter I should say. Uh, of uh, triangle uh, ABC again, and that's the point O. Uh, because we have a special triangle here, a angle ACB being 120 degrees, uh, we have a 60 de degree angle here. This angle here would be a 30 degree angle, and as such, um, it's not too hard to visualize that, for instance, if you connect AO, uh, triangle uh, ACO would be an uh, equilateral triangle and as such M is the midpoint of CO as well. So let's uh, so far let's write down what we have. Uh, CM is equal to MO as well 
and uh, what else? Um, yeah, and finally, um, there's another line which is perpendicular to AB besides HP, and that's CO, right? So therefore, that would imply, let's write that down. So CO is perpendicular to AB, but at the same time, um, HP is also perpendicular to AB. So that would suggest CO and HP are parallel. So let's go ahead and write that down. So I don't need all these details. So we have uh, CO parallel to HP. Well, now let's go ahead and try to uh, solve the problem. Because of these two parallel lines, uh, we would get two similar triangles. And in this case, the similar triangles are, uh, let me actually write that down on this side here. Uh, so, the, so, so far I know that CO is parallel to HP, implying that um, implying that triangle CMQ, CMQ is similar to triangle PNQ. And the reason being that we have alternate interior angles here. So these two angles are congruent and we have more alternate interior or you might use the, these vertical angles here. And then the third angles will also be congruent. So we have angle angle uh, similarity here. And in fact, we even know the, uh, the, the ratio of similarity, which is uh, obviously uh, one to two. Uh, why? Because we know that two CQ is equal to QP, CQ, PQ, let's call it PQ. So that would also imply that uh, say two uh, MQ is equal to QN or even better two CM is equal to PN. But wait, 2CM is, is the same thing as CO, right? So therefore, that would mean that CO is actually equal to PN. But CO is the circumradius of triangle ACB, a, and it is fixed, right? So this is just the circumradius uh, of our triangle, and it is fixed. So that's the important point. It's a fixed uh, uh, amount, length, I should say. So PN is fixed. So regardless of where you pick P on the circum circle, N will be uh, to the left of P basically. And this distance would be, so it will be shifted by minus R to the left, right? So by, by, by R to the left, if you will. So therefore, as I pick P along the circum circle, all that it will do is to shift it by, by uh, R to the left. And we can keep doing that. And that's obviously if you pick P here, our point would be exactly the circumcenter, but that's it. So now the question is, what is the locus of all these points? Well, all these points obviously will be a translation of the uh, circumcircle, which is to the right of AB, right? And uh, yeah, it's just a translation. So, uh, well, obviously we would be translating all these points uh, including, well, uh, I should have also included this one. So including the point which is uh, right here, the point P when it is here, where you have this equilateral triangle, OBP is an equilateral triangle, that, that would also translate the point P all the way to B. So as a result, we would end up with the following picture. So I, I'm just doing a rough sketch of this thing. So we would get, well, uh, something like this like that i would say all the way up to here oops uh to uh, so and on the oh. so this distance so if p is chosen on a or b obviously it will shift all the way up to here it will shift the point n up to here and then the same way it will shift the point n up to here Okay, so that's a terrible way to represent the point N. So the point N is right here. And the line AB has been shifted like this in a sense, right? So uh, at the point N converges with A prime and let's call that B prime. But then we can look at the second scenario as well. Uh, it will give us pretty much the same uh, type of results. Let me go ahead and first uh, we, we would like to connect uh, CP. 
Okay, so that's very tiny, so it might be a good idea to expand the picture and maybe use a tinier uh, line. Okay, go ahead and do that. Perfect. And then uh, in the second step, we need to uh, connect... Uh, oh, we need to find uh, two, one third of the distance. So pretty much the one which is closer to C. So pretend it is somewhere here. So that's our point uh, Q, if you will. And I will go ahead and draw a perpendicular from P to AB. And probably I should extend it on the other direction as well. The reason being that when I connect MQ, they, the two will intersect right here at the point N. Now we can go back to the original shape. All right. So in this particular case where P is on the same side uh, of AB with C, um, well, I don't know if the picture is big enough at this step. Um, so I think you guys should agree that, so this is our point Q here, uh, the, the triangle CMQ, so this triangle CMQ, uh, CMQ is still similar to triangle PNQ, PNQ, yes. So therefore, in a sense, our, um, our picture is actually immune to configuration issues. So uh, as a result, um, again, all the points on this minor arc AB will be translated, right? So uh, starting from the point B, uh, which will be probably translated to a point like this. So we will, and, and then the point A as well. Um, yeah, so therefore we will end up with the rest, the missing parts of our uh, circle. Okay, so this is the missing part here. So it is the part which is missing over here, right? So you can just go ahead and superimpose these things now, and uh, and that's it. So therefore, the co the answer to our problem would be that the point N lies on uh, on this circle, uh, which is obviously centered at point C, right? Because it has the same. It's just a shift of the circumcircle. It has the same circumradius. So the same radius as the circumcircle of triangle ABC. The circumcircle of triangle ABC has radius uh, CO. Ours, the second circle, red circle, will also have a radius CO, and 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 that's it. It has it has ex exactly the same size of as the circumcircle of triangle ABC as well. So therefore, the answer is um, this fixed circle is a translation of the uh, circumcircle of triangle uh, ABC along the um, altitude uh, CM, if you will, uh, in the opposite direction uh, from C, uh, we are going in the opposite direction to AB, right? So, and we just, um, and that's, if you will, you can say that if you go in the opposite direction to O, so you can call this point as O prime. So we are considering that circle which has diameter O O prime, and that circle is again the translation of the circumcircle of triangle ABC, and we're done.